Hello and welcome everybody to our daily live trading webinar. We call it real-time daily trading ideas, five days, five traders. And we would like to screen the markets, create some trading ideas and show you some trading setups. But first of all, our risk disclaimer. Forex and CFDs are leveraged products and can uh, result in losses that exceed your deposit. Um, so be aware of the risk and uh, all uh, things we are saying here and we shown here are only personal opinion of the authors and not our advice to investing. Please be aware, be aware of that. So, but here are the good news. Uh, Christmas is coming uh, early with Admiral Markets. We have special offers this year. So, for more details, check out our website. Here you can see some pictures of, of our traders. Today is uh, Thursday, so today with Paul. And so, um, yeah, later more about Paul and his trading style. Here you can see some of our benefits with Admiral Markets. So maybe here, yeah, uh, for example, our uh, DAX 30, uh, typical fixed spread from um, 0 0.8 points during the main session hours. So it's a very low um, uh, spread here. So uh, it's our best seller. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions about our products or our services. Um, here you can see our telephone number or our email. Uh, you can check also our YouTube channel. There are a lot of videos you can see from our live session tradings. So, and that's it for the moment. Thank you for listening and I uh, say hello to you, Paul. Can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, I can uh, I can hear you loud and clear. Can you uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, your sound is very well. Uh, you have the screen and you can start. Excellent. Excellent. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody from a from a, a glorious from a uh, glorious winter's day here in the UK, wherever you are. I hope it's uh, I hope it's a great day for you too. Um. So today, ladies and gentlemen, what am I going to talk about? Well, I'm going to do a little bit on uh, DAX and Euro Dollar. Everybody loves a bit of trading on DAX and Euro Dollar. They're very popular. But then actually, I want to have a little talk about strength, weakness, and then feeding into uh, a particular sort of a uh, little momentum setup that you can uh, see on markets, and in particular. We're going to look at the uh, the euro Canadian dollar, which will all become apparent as we go through. So, uh, as always, let's uh, start with a very very quick uh, update on what we've been seeing on you know, the sort of uh, very popular uh, products here. So, uh, here we are. This is DAX on the weekly. Nothing really too exciting there. Um, if you might remember, sort of last week we talked a little bit about how uh, you know I was expecting you know. We were down to the sort of 13,000, 12,900 level of uh, support and we're seeing, you know, if it was going to hold, I thought we may see a little bounce up towards the sort of uh, kind of a retracing towards around about the 13,250 level. Well, what we've actually done in the last week is uh, we've just gone a little bit sideways, as you can see there, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we can see there's lots of uh, lots of wicks to the south side. OK, and so that gives me an indication that there's, uh, there's plenty of buyers there for the moment. But, you know, uh, what we we see or what I particularly see is, is that price is just coiling up there and if I just uh, I'm just going to quickly uh, let's just zoom in a little bit shall we so uh, you know what I'm looking there daily chart just for those of you who are completely new to trading you know my my uh, trading analysis very simple I have uh, green bullish candles red bearish candles I have a blue 20 period simple moving average a red 50 uh, period simple moving average and a green 200 period simple moving average. Um, I also have uh, fractals, which are these uh, little sort of uh, little applets you'll see there, and I uh, just draw in significant levels of uh, horizontal support and resistance and the odd trend line, keeping it very, very simple. But you know, what I see here, you know, when I look at it, is, as I said, is uh, I see the sort of DAX is, is coiling up there, okay? We can see that it's just uh, it's forming itself into a little bit of a sort of almost like a tight triangle there that uh, a symmetrical triangle seeing forming. What I also take note of is that on the daily chart here, we've had uh, you know the 20 period moving average is, is now acting as acted as like dynamic resistance, okay, for the last sort of three times that price has been up there. And we also have kind of the 50 period moving average acting almost like dynamic support there. It's not really been able to close beneath there on, a, on, the, on the daily basis. 
So if I go down a little bit more, okay, then, you know, I'm just effectively looking at that. And it's just, to me, that's just confirming more that, you know, the DAX at the moment is, is just, is coiling up. There's, there's lots of wicks there within that sort of triangle. So, you know, price is getting knocked back and about of around about the 13,000 level, call that as a sort of, um, you know, maybe a, a point of reference. Some might call that a point of control. But what I'll be doing is just watching that. And, and I would actually be waiting to see which way that breaks, okay? And, and that would provide me with a little bit of a, a, a trend idea so I don't see a particular trade on there today as in you know to take for today but you know that's what I'm looking at that's what I'll be keeping an eye on with regards to the DAX very quick look at the euro dollar now we have a lot of uh, euro dollar traders here okay so um, where were we let's go down to the to the daily chart here okay so uh, you know we looked at a few weeks back around about head and shoulders pattern it moved down quite nicely but realistically now 116 level we talked about acted as very very strong support and price bounced up and what we had was if i just zoom out a little bit there we had price you know here just rallied right up and then you know last week we talked about how it was forming into a uh, sort of you know <clears throat> almost like a you know a descending triangle and uptrend which is uh, an interesting pattern but uh, what we talked about was how the 200 period moving average on the four hour chart had acted as you know dynamic resistance here where it touched and now is acting as dynamic support okay resistance becomes support support becomes resistance very very simple concepts within technical analysis and trading but you know just keeps happening time and time again and what we saw you know what we've seen last week is you know you can see that it's just blown up there okay the euro has uh, strengthened considerably it got up there to around about the 1950 it's come off a little bit this week okay not surprisingly after such a strong surge but you know what i'll be looking at is that 120 level is above there it's a it's a magnet that's the way i think of it okay you know big big round numbers like that they become a magnet price gets drawn towards those particular levels and you know you'll see that time and time again okay it's, it becomes a, a zone and and you know once price gets near towards it we know that there are always people who will have their orders around big round numbers and that is what sort of attracts price to, towards it so so uh, once again you know i don't see a particular trade right this moment on uh, the euro dollar for for today you know maybe we'll see a bit more of a little bit of a pullback before it moves in but overall i'm looking to be a buyer of the euro all right and that sort of kind of leads on to the main thrust of what i want to talk about today I keep saying every time I talk about, you know, when I look to trade uh, FX, okay, I'm looking to buy strength and sell weakness. I know I say that uh, every week, but that's because I know that uh, sometimes as traders, we need to hear, we need to hear a message a few times for it to sink into our uh, consciousness. I'm not, uh, you know, I am not uh, one of the uh, the tier one major banks who are always looking to sort of sell strength and buy weakness. I don't, uh, I'm not in that position at uh, yet at that moment. Uh, and, uh, you know, most of us as private traders, we are looking to play a very simple game. And so I'm looking to buy strength and sell weakness. And in particular, what I've seen over the last few weeks is that we've seen the euro has been well, you know, it might be said the euro has been strong since about April. Took a little dip the last month or two, but over the last week or two, it's actually come back and it's heading. It's topping the topping the sort of strength and weakness sort of matrix that I run myself, that I do every weekend to give me an insight into who's the strongest currencies, who's the weakest, because where possible, I want to be buying strength and selling weakness. So we know the euro is strong. But what we've also seen over the last few weeks is that the commodity dollars, the com dolls, as some people will hear them called, they have been weak and getting weaker. In particular, for those of you who are new to trading, commodity dollars is really looking at the, the Kiwi dollar, the New Zealand dollar, the Canadian dollar and the Australian dollar. In particular, the New Zealand dollar has been enormously weak over the last few uh, over the last few months, and realistically, you know, that was just a very simple trade to, to buy the strongest, which was effectively euro and sterling, and sell the weakest, which was you know Kiwi dollar. But what we've also seen is Canadian dollar and Aussie dollar have been down there towards, let's say, the bottom half of the of the matrix. So realistically, I'm looking at, well, you know, what can I do? I want to be a buyer of euro and a seller of Canadian dollar in this particular case. So when I look at a chart, a very simple chart, okay, all I'm looking at is, you know, as I do every time, I start off monthly chart, draw in some particular uh, levels of uh, support and resistance. This is what the uh, fractals help me when I start to see particular fractals around certain areas and certain levels. It gets me interested, gets me sort of draws my eye towards particular levels that I am keen to take note of. 
And then I'm just going down to the um, to the weekly chart and just once again, just looking out for particular levels that are of, uh, that are of interest to me that, you know, that I sort of think, well, you know, we can see where price has had a reaction there. That starts to get me, uh, that starts to get me a little bit interested. And then I just clearly just move down through the candles, okay, or through the time frames. And what we see today and over the last week or so, the last couple of days, Euro is getting back up to this resistance level, okay? And this is what we're going to call this about 152.50, all right? At 152.50, we have a, a level there, all right, that, you know, has been effectively looking at really at the high of the year and price is getting back towards that because we're seeing Euro strength and Canadian dollar weakness. But in particular, what I want to do is I want to share with you a little bit of interest and insight, a little bit of a a little bit of something to, to sort of give you um, a little bit of a teaching point, something that you might be able to look out for on charts and that you can start to use to turn into a trade idea for today. What we're looking at here is the 30 minute chart of the Euro Canadian dollar. And I want to just you to uh, suspend your imagination for a moment. And I want you to think about what happens if, you know, on your summer holidays, you're on the beach, you blow up a beach ball, you take the beach ball into the water. What happens when you try to push the beach ball under the water? As soon as you let it go, the beach ball should pop up out of the water. I'm sure you've all done that as kids, maybe sometimes even as adults. But you should understand, you know, you'll have understand that experience. What has that got to do with trading, you might be asking? Well, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just about to show you. You can see there's been a nice uptrend here in the Euro Canadian dollar, a lovely uptrend. And this morning, you know, we've already had the big pop north, as you can see, as a nice move up. But were there any particular signs that that might have been coming? Were there any particular signs that that might have happened? Well, what I want you to look at here is, if I just get my cursor out, what I want you to look at here is just before the price popped up north, price got pushed down. See how price sort of fell down, it got depressed, it got pushed under the waterline, and then price pops up. Just think about it, you know, think of it almost like a, like a beach ball setup. Price gets forced down. We're in an uptrend. It gets forced down very strongly. A big, strong sell-off. All right, it gets pushed down, so that so that you know the big boys can basically load up. And what happens is, bang, price pops up. So does that happen a lot? Is that just a one-off? Well, you know, here we've got a, a really sort of good example of it. Okay, we had it happen there. Well, what do you know? When we look at this, okay, here we go. It happened yesterday. Oops, just one second. It happened yesterday there in the afternoon. It also happened yesterday uh, morning. Price got pushed down right before it flew its way up. Let's see if there's any more of these. Okay, here we go. Price gets pushed down before it actually fires its way all the way up north. And in the more at the sort of earlier on in the, uh, the day on what would have been what Thursday, uh, Friday, sorry. Price gets pushed down. Okay, there's a selling bar that's bigger than the rest of them before price flies up. Hopefully you can all see that. You can see that phenomenon and how it happens. All right, there's a smaller one here later in the uh, later in the day. Okay, hopefully you can see that. So, you know what I looked at this morning when I was looking at trades is you know when we get up here, price was in a nice little uh, you know price was nice little overnight zone. Excuse my drawing there. All right, and actually what we had there was you know nice little range there. Price people are normally looking to sort of trade a breakout. And what, what happened is price got bullied down. We're in an uptrend, price gets bullied down, all right, probably triggers a few of these short orders and then price reverses and it flies all the way up, all right? So how do we turn that into a little bit of a trade idea to finish off with? Well, as if I go down a little bit more in the uh, the charts, well, I start to get interested around about this particular level, all right? And here I am on the five minute chart, price has popped up, it's gonna rally back or fall back down. So I'm looking around about this particular zone, 51.85, back towards the sort of the 200 period moving average. And then I start to get interested in being, you know, really sort of a, a buyer around that kind of level. Stop, whoops, there we go. We're the stop there just beneath the uh, the limits. And let's go back up towards the, uh, the highs of the days to run for that trade. And there we go. We have a trade placed on. We, uh, we know that where possible, we want to be buying strength, selling weakness. We know that uh, we have seen that, you know, price has been in a uh, price has been in a nice uptrend there. OK, very nice uptrend. I want, you know, I want to sort of join that where possible. 
we can also see that price gets pushed down before it pops north all right and every time it comes back well then it falls its way you know it pushes its way back up because at the moment euro strong canadians weak and that's the way we want to, to trade so I hope that uh, gives you a little bit of insight. I hope that gives you a little bit of uh, interest. If you know, you're new to trading and haven't seen that phenomenon, well, you know, I, I want you to <laughs> think about beach balls, all right? Whenever you're finding a nice trend and you're seeing price being squeezed down, think of it like that beach ball. Beach ball's been held under the water. As soon as you take your hand off, it normally pops itself up and out of the water. And that's what we're looking for in markets. And a nice trend when price gets forced down, we're looking for it to sort of reverse and pop north. And we want to be in a position to, you know, where possible to actually sort of join that. If we're, you know, if this morning you'd have been able to do that when you saw that, you know, uh, trading bright and early. But, you know, the rest of us, you can see as price fades back, as it pulls back, we know it's going to give us an opportunity to be another buyer on, a, on what is an established uptrend. So I hope that gives you a little bit of insight. I hope that gives you a little something to look at and work away. All right. So uh, I'll just quickly finish off with a question. So uh, Eric's asking, why is the market so quiet? You're a US dollar short or long today. Well, you know, we uh, we talked a little bit about that at the start, Eric. You know, the I, I personally don't think markets are quiet. If anything, I think markets are uh, I think markets have been a, a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more interesting the last couple of weeks, okay, than uh, than than what had happened over sort of uh, earlier in the year. I think markets have been quite interesting. I think there's been some some opportunities, but with all opportunities, and you know, and and what I might say for all great traders is, sometimes you need to exercise a little bit of patience. If there's anything that might sound like a, a strange trading edge that I know I have, I know it's patience. I know I can sit and wait and wait and wait for the right setup. And that is one of my particular edges. So I think there are, I personally think markets aren't necessarily quiet. I think there's some uh, some great opportunities there. If you are operating within FX markets, well, you know, as I said, just find out which markets are strongest, which one's the weakest, and start to look for opportunities um, there. If you're an index trader, well, you know, the American indexes, I, I don't think anybody would call them quiet at the moment. There's been a, you know, they're hitting all time highs, right? And they're just, they're flying away. Even in some of some of the uh, stocks, although I'm not a stock trader, you know, there are opportunities within them as well. So, um, you know, it's uh, markets are either markets are either a threat or an opportunity. It's to you as the trader to, uh, to, to, to turn it into an opportunity for yourself. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Unless there's any specific questions, that's uh, that's your little idea for today. I wish you the very best of success with your own trading, uh, and I look forward to speaking to you in a, in a week's time or so. Okay, Paul. Thank you for your screening the markets and for explaining what happened at the at the markets right now. Uh, I hope the listeners have some um, yeah new ideas for trading setups you are showing us here today. So um, yeah, thanks for listening to the audience. Um, yeah, see you next week, Paul. Um, for the audience, um, have a good day. Uh, in the afternoon, we have here from the German office um, uh, next webinar. It's called uh, Live Trading. Um, so you are invited. Uh, at also, more information, um, the links uh, on our website. So feel free to um, join us. So yeah, that's it for the moment. Thank you, Paul, again, and see you next week. Uh, have a good day, everybody. Bye.